So I probably look a bit wrecked. I've just been to the gym. I'm quite knackered. Um, all my muscles are like not proud of me. Anyway, um, I've decided to because I've done the book reviews and the Blu-ray and we're well, not reviews, but like we're uh, and each one, you know, in the PS Five, PS Four, PS Three, and all of our PlayStations, and also the books and the Blu-rays are like said brief little like mini reviews in each one. These are getting foggy because I'm all there. These are getting yeah. Um, anyway. I was getting brief re reviews and I decided that I like reviewing things, I like saying my opinion. Not that I think my opinion is better than anybody else's, I just like sharing my thoughts on things. So I thought, why not just, I've got a plan and this is going to kind of update the channel as well. I believe I'm going to post a video every now and again. Um, once per episode, I believe I'm gonna review from. I'm gonna rewatch them every time I rewatch them. I'll have say my. I'll make a video like this, say my thoughts. So, um, my plan is to do Doctor Who from series one of the reboot, so Christopher Eggleton, all the way up until. I don't know. I'm definitely going to do my golden era, which is like series one to series four. I guess I'll do. I think I'll do everything. At least until. Like, at least until. Uh, Peter Capaldi regenerates. So that's, that's an update. I'm going to be doing little videos like this where I just review. Um, an episode, I ramble on and talk about each episode of Doctor Who. Hopefully this is like, will be a little build up up to the 60th, 60th, I'll be done by the time around about the 60th and I might even do a video on the 60th. So if you're a Doctor Who fan, that is good because that is my next plan. Anyway, so rather than this just being an update uh, video, I thought, well, last night, uh, my cinema has been um, doing, my local cinema has been doing, um, like, because of the 60th of James Bond, funny enough, um, they've been releasing, uh, they've been releasing, like, re-releasing the movies in the cinemas, and, like, not all of them, they've missed a few, they've missed one, right, so, two, three weeks ago, uh, we started this month. I watched uh, Goldeneye for the first time ever. That was great, but I'm not going to review that, at least not a day. Um, I, uh, so I watched Goldeneye for the first time in the cinema. It was great because he, he, Pierce Brosnan is my favourite James Bond. It's the 90s one. I, I grew up with him. Anyway, so then this, this, they've skipped the next one, which is. Uh, I forgot what it's called now. Uh, but um, the third one, which I grew up with, is uh, is uh, the world is not enough. And so this one and then the next one are the ones I grew up with, um, which is no time no no time to die is the bloody newest one. Um, die another day. Die Another Day, I love it. It's, as I remember as a kid, it's so over the top and cheesy. Literally, like, fire the sun at the people. It's, like, fucking stupid. Unless it's, like, a satellite or, like, a laser or something. And, but anyway. Goldeneye is great. It's more grounded, essentially. Um, you know, they don't have many music. It's silent, like, at times. And you just hear, like, things in the background. There's not much music, and then there's like action scenes, but nothing like uh, the next one. The, the Goldeneye felt like it felt like um, the other ones, 
Like, so I guess it's technically a golden eye in um, the world is not enough review. But it felt like the old, like, 60s ones and stuff. Because, like, films in the 60s, it did have just long pauses and no music and, you know, and, like, fighting with no music and stuff. Um, but everything's got to have music these days. So it's it's really like, you know, you, you get... It makes you sit up when something doesn't have music. Like um, an episode of Buffy, which I might actually review as well. Uh, the Body. I won't see the spoilers, but that has. I won't see the spoilers, but that episode has no music whatsoever. Um, the credits kind of ruin that, but anyway, I'm not. I'm not. Um, going to talk about that uh, the day. That episode ruined me. <laughs> uh, but anyway. So yeah. Um. The world is not enough. I just like I have these memories as a kid, and I like I remember I like remember these different scenes, and I was saying them all. I was like, oh yeah, so it was that and that, and then the ski scene that I like remembered like very slightly. That was um that was great. Like the set pieces, just the opening. He's it's just James Bond in a in in a um Swiss bank as meeting, and um like meeting room or office whatever and then action starts then he has to escape he does like a funny thing where he ties himself to a guy and uh uses him as like kind of like a way to like or like something to keep him from like just plummeting um which was funny and clever and and um then and then you know you're back at he's back at the uh, He's back at um, MI6, and then, you know, everything seems all right. And then, spoilers, by the way, uh, for a movie from 1999. Yeah, I was one years old, probably, when this came out, or just around about coming up to it. Um, But anyway, so, the guy explodes, and it's like immediately, like, yeah, it's obviously the daughter. I remember being a daughter, she did that. But what's great about that is, like, Bond works it out very young, kind of, I guess, halfway through the film, but, like, like the opening with the boat chase and all that, which is great, really funny, I love it, I remember that, that was so nostalgic, remember that as a kid, that just long chase, and it's just, it's, it's brilliant. I'm glad that they actually had music to it, the great Bond music. They didn't just have it silent, like which um, the, the last film would have probably done, Goldmine. Um, but yeah, and, 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 and then, you know, there's the twist that, oh, it, the main villain, the scary, scarred villain, which is normally always the villain, um, you know, the scarred guy, he's the one behind everything. It's like, no... He got manipulated. It's actually um the daughter of the the guy that died at the start, King. It's a Ele- Electra, which I've never heard anybody else call be called Electra apart from obviously the Daredevil character or Marvel character. Um, but yeah. Oh, they want to nuke the place or something. It's like. The reason the villains want to do something in something like this isn't doesn't really matter. It's just like a fun adventure. It 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 it's like you know it's just a movie where you can sit back and have fun and it's, it, but it's not like Fast and the Furious or something where it's really dumb. It's still like clever. It's like clever dumb in a way, um, it's like perfect like nineties like trees and I love it, which is why I was like what I've been watching Buffy, but Buffy decided to just get really dark and serious and I was like okay, um, which is still great, but yeah and, and like but like okay when Bond he has that, the villain the the bloke villain. Um, repeat the same thing Electra said it was like it made like a, you know it really zoomed into his face and you saw his reaction 
and then he um and and then he um like the the musical like trumpets or something or do do like as if like he's he's noticed something and it's like could you not like not had that musical sting and not zoomed in on his face just had bond like kind of like widen his eyes or look and then after all that fighting that happens on that fight scene and the the um the silo place blowing up and stuff after all that then have um like bond just come back to elect rangan i know that you're up to something because he said the same thing you said so clearly you've been around each other and he knew loads of things that he shouldn't have so you've obviously told him and it's like it should have just been like that and then the audience should like the audience isn't dumb i mean there are dumb audience like obviously there's all like dumb people out there that might or people with um learning difficulties or even autism that might not like you know um grasp it straight away you know so i get that but i don't know it, it, it always feels rewarding if like the movie doesn't when the movies don't like um uh like keep a hold of your hand and and, and like guide you through it it's when if like you pay attention like there's an episode of buffy that i just saw yesterday where um uh, a character is smoking and obviously you're not meant to smoke in hospital but instead of a character a character's going what are you doing because he's like you know he's a vampire he's like rebe like rebellious he's an he's arsehole he doesn't care about anything so it's like instead of like going oh you you know, character go like making the jokes, like seeing the joke. Oh, you're not meant to be smoking in a hospital. There's just like if you pay attention right behind him as he's lighting it up and smoking it. There's just a little sign that has a uh, um that has a a cigarette and a cross through it, and that was funny enough. And that was like that even like that also like shows you that he just he's a character that just doesn't care as well like about like rules about the rules R rather than a character going you don't like the rules you know it, it it's like just to show you know it, it, it was like clever shot and i love it um but anyway back to that like yeah that's that's a problem and the ending is great like say the the twist that like it was the woman all along and she's actually really good at manipulating people and like again maybe you could have tried to like work out like how to just like show that rather than her going i've always been able to manipulate men they've been i've been able to get away with everything and they do everything i want to do just because i'm beautiful and wealthy and like you know and as a kid, that was a shocking scene, and it still is a shocking scene with what Bond does, because it's like, you know, it's that mentality that like, oh, the main hero wouldn't shoot an unarmed woman, you know, but um, yeah, and it, it's funny like how like, you know, as you get older, you like, you you can see the same scene. But in a different perspective, because obviously I've been in some very like horrific relationships where I've been controlled and manipulated and abused by women, and it's um and so like seeing that like in a different thing, like seeing that in a different angle, like oh yeah, this woman is just manipulating people and and and, and stuff, and then she tries to be working on bond and okay. I wouldn't like for real life scenarios I wouldn't go to this extreme but Bond just fucking shoots her and it's like it's a show that she thinks Bond genuinely like cared for her because they made love and stuff and she thinks that yeah of course of course look at me of course you, you, you love me and Bond isn't that type of guy at least it's I think they have done things in the older ones and then they've done it 
in the newest one where like Bond actually finally found someone he loves. So there's that. But the, the main theme is amazing. Uh, the whole it, like it just, I've got it playing in my head right now, like the opening. Um yeah, I've really I really enjoyed it. It was a great blast from the past. Uh it was um yeah the the ending the submarine fight was like just iconic to me i remember watching that a million times as a kid um like the story like i said the story isn't like the amazing amazing story but it's like you, you don't see there's certain movies that the story like the the reason why a villain is doing something isn't really the point it's like you're watching a spy adventure with like crazy shit and stuff i guess like the newer the daniel craig ones want you to like you know more of the story i don't like them that like daniel craig ones they're, they're boring i mean i i like no time to die though i see faults many many faults in that as well but i enjoyed it i like um but yeah uh, I'm gonna watch um nineties James Bond um the the one that isn't gonna be in cinema soon because after um this fourth one um uh live, the die another day which again I've got loads of memories of that all oh, that fucking fencing scene it, it's like amazing and so I cannot wait to see that. Um, that film is like just got loads of iconic things like the the ending is like a fight on an aeroplane that's like just I'm sure it's just like falling apart and stuff like way like doors are opening and shit and they're like like it's like you know steady and shit and yeah um I really love Piers Brosnan as as Bond um I, he's the one I think of as Bond just because he's the one. That, like, you know, I, I, I was born in 1998 and then, you know, in early 2000s, they were the ones that were, like, shown, like, more, I guess. Or, like, I don't know. Those were, like, the newer movies. Um, then Daniel Craig showed up in 2006 and I just didn't care. It, it, it's weird that, like, is, he, is, he, is Daniel Craig, I think he is, isn't he, like, the longest running Bond? Because... We I think like COVID's helped as well because like No Time to Die was meant to come out like in twenty twenty or something. It but I think it was delayed anyway, it was meant to come out like even twenty nineteen or something, but uh it came out last year and um like yeah, two thousand and like seven or two thousand six, two thousand and seven to to on like yeah, to like two thousand and twenty one. Uh yeah. It it it's been a long while for him. I don't know if he's the longest and I haven't looked up and I can't be bothered to look it up, but um Pierce Brosnan like even like there was like say just four stories, like that isn't in my brain because I remember all the games, Nightfire, there was um a few like, I remember there's a game where you're, like, one of the first missions, you're, like, in a, like, a, like, it's, like, in the, is it, like, a Japanese or a Chinese, like, garden place, and you're sneaking around, and, like, there's a woman that w works with, like, the person you meant to protect or something, and it turns out she betrays him and kills him, um, she was just using him and stuff uh, um i remember that game i would like to play it again one day i might not hold up like but yeah um the games a kid like that era is just my era of bond i mean god knows who's gonna be bond next um i don't like the way they've portrayed bond with daniel craig i do not like it because they made too serious when yes it's like uh, uh, you know like I don't know, like, James Bond, like, he makes jokes. I mean, like, Bond always makes quips all the way through the Pierce Brosnan ones, at least. I'm sure he does it all the way through the other ones as well, but, like, 
there's all like these cheesy jokes and it's like yeah they're cheesy jokes but it's fun and like there's comedy in all of them and like i remember there was this like fat american guy that like he wasn't even a spy just keep showing up and got in like in involved with um bond accidentally like he just ended up in his car or ended up just like like in a, in a the american got into a, like a shootout and stuff that was like in the 60s or 70s like and there's a bit where like bond like flies up on a bridge and like turns and it like literally goes a whoop sound it's like bond has always been fun like i don't know why they wanted daniel craig to be so edgy and serious and like then they wanted to like basically make it so Oh, Bond, actually, you've known Bond to be a womanizer. Well, he actually is, and he gets turned down by women in um, in No Time to Die. Uh, like, um, like, and they've, like, gotten rid of, like, the Bond girl, basically, thing. Like, the say, oh, no, no, wasn't a Bond girl and stuff. I just, like, they're just fun movies. Let them be fun. But, yeah um it was really it was really good uh film blast from the past uh yeah i really enjoyed it um and i give it it might be because of nostalgia reasons but i give it like a nine or a ten but like this is a thing like if you were if for, it's nine or ten for its era definitely like, I don't know if it's, like, the, it's hard because, like, the way films change over the years. So, it's like, oh, well, it's very cheesy for the 90s, but it, watching the 90s, it would have, like, not been cheesy because it was the 90s, you know? But, I don't know. I, I think I think it's great. I'd give it, like, a 10. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Brilliant. I love it. So that's it. I've had another ramble, and it's actually been one part of this time, so that's great. But thank you. Doctor Who reviews will happen eventually. Um, I'll be going through series one to series uh, thirteen, <laughs> um, um, episode by episode. It'll be a separate video for each episode. Um, I don't know how much, like how long, how long these episodes will be. Hopefully they'll not be like they'll not have two parters or something. Um But like yeah, like some might I might not have much to say, some I might have, but anyway, I've rambled on enough. I'm gonna chill now because I'm tired from my gym uh, um, trip. Goodbye. <laughs>